unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, don't worry about timing stuff. This is what I, the only thing that I'm good at doing is is being on time. Usually, today almost didn't. being on time and being done on time. Those two things I'm usually good at. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here. All right. So, um, I I guess uh, have we begun yet? So I just need to. Okay. Was well, everyone still in the waiting room? Um. So we've begun recording. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just admit, admit them all now. Oh, it's they've been, I think, admitted. Yes. And we're ready to go. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, I just need to <laughs> get to my OneNote. Should I move over, actually hang over? Okay. All right. So uh, welcome everybody today to uh, the Digital Transformation and Government uh, 2023 uh, uh, conference. Um, today we're going to, or this for this session, we're going to be uh, 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 receive a presentation from Lieutenant Lieutenant Commander Josh uh, A. a. Clemen. Um, so he has, is the Deputy Director of Military Digital Operations um, uh, for, for DND in Canada. Uh, this presentation will go through how the Canadian Armed Forces uh, can undertake digital transformation so, so that they can look at uh, future concepts, develop new processes, incorporate digital technologies, and prepare the workforce and implement cultural change to provide operational advantage in the battle space, improve stewardship of the corporate space, and reimagine the defense workforce. Uh, Josh Clevin, he joined the, the, the uh, Armed Forces in 1999, graduated from RMC uh, in 2003, uh, and following graduation, um, it has, it went to the School of Aerospace Control Operations. Uh, and so he's, he's done his uh, staff college at the Air Command and staff college at Maxwell AFB in 2015. And uh, so we, we, and that brings us basically today where he's got a completed master in science and data science from Eastern University at St. David's um, in, in Pennsylvania in 2021. So uh, Josh, you're on mute. So uh, I, um, I'll hand it over to you to, to take over and just let me know to, when to change the slides. So yeah, as well, so, so, sorry for everybody else, if there's questions and answer, questions that you have, there's a question and, and answer tab in which you can input your can, your questions and we'll answer those towards the end of the ser the uh, series. Sorry about that, but, uh, Lieutenant Commander, over to you. Yeah, no, uh, no problem. Um, thanks for moderating and and please feel free if there's someone in a chat or Q and A and I'm not seeing it and there's a pertinent question, I have no problem um, stopping uh, in mid train of thought and answering those as they come up. Uh, if I can't see it, just just please let me know. Um, so first off, thanks uh, very much to the event coordinators uh, for inviting me to speak uh, today to, you know, uh, on the topic of transformation in government. Obviously, um, the CAF makes up a part of the government, although I do believe that we do have a little bit of a different uh, view of things. It's probably a good uh, way to look at literacy using potentially a little bit different lens and hopefully is very uh, useful to some of the people that are here. So I did notice also on the agenda, obviously, a very diverse group of presenters I imagine also a very diverse group of attendees. So I've tried uh, my best to make sure that I I uh, got from acronyms and you know some other places like that, which uh, I tend to, to be very used to giving this, these types of briefs to military people. And we we always don't even notice the times that we're using. So I'll even start by saying CAF is the Canadian Armed Forces, just to make sure that's very clear. That's what I'm talking about. But on my very personal slide, I'm seeing one of those. So. Um, uh, I actually, again, I'm very uh, happy to be invited because I, I noticed there's a lot of doctor, uh, you know, obviously uh, PhDs, CEOs that were invited, and I'm, you know, uh, uh, upper middle management of the Canadian Forces uh, into this role here. So um, just before I start, so um, stay in this slide for now. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a direct participant in digital transformation and government. Um, right now, the Canadian Forces um, is at the beginning stages of a, of a journey towards digital transformation in the next little while. And my my unit is the Chief of Combat Systems Integration, which has one of its directorates, the Military Digital Operations, primarily focused um, to enable the uh, CAF into digital transformation. Um, so go ahead, next slide, please. 
So I just framed the agenda a little bit as just some Q and A here. Um, here's the questions that I'll use to drive the discussion. I'll hopefully provide a good enough description answer of each of these here. Um, uh, but just just first, a little bit of context as well um, as we look at these questions using a bit of a, of a calf lens. So for those of you that, that aren't quite aware, the DMD calf is a little bit different than some of the other government departments. Um, surely we're we're definitely nest underneath the minister, just like all the other departments. Um, but there's a dual reporting structure. So we use the term DD CAF a lot to represent that there's the CAF side going straight up to the chief of defense staff, and then the DD side going to the deputy minister. And a lot of time we call that the defense team. The two of them together will issue directives when they pertain to the entire DD CAF. But my piece here and the piece that we're uh, working with is CAF focused, but in the context of also working along the DD CAF. Um, I also want to add, and I also think I noticed in the uh, um, participant list here, uh, one of the members that have had a lot to do with this more than I have in the last little while. What I'm going to brief, we're going to touch on a few pieces, including the CAF uh, digital campaign plan. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I mentioned up front that it's a it's a well-crafted plan, well-developed. I didn't write it, but I'm very happy to have it in my hands now for execution. Um, so why don't you press on uh, next slide? So find it useful to start with a bit of a problem statement. This is the problem that we find ourselves in in the CAF is digital transformation is our, our goal. Um, so how do we do this uh, to kind of get ahead of where we are, but really this for the operational advantage is what we're looking for. And I think that maybe this was borrowed a bit in the intro here, this uh, this phrase here, but um, we're not doing digital transformation for, this, for its own sake. We're doing it for the operational advantage that we can get, gain from becoming digitally transformed. So it's not a choice as far as we're looking at it, it's an imperative. So for various reasons, um, we're no longer looking at this as a, as a context of future warfare. Um, we're seeing this in world current events right now, potentially with one side being more digitally literate than the other with results that appear to be uh, much better, much more effective than the other. So we can see digitalization as being not just a, a choice, it's something we have to do, especially because Canada is small, uh, we fight with our allies. We don't go anywhere alone. So our allies and our partners and digital transformation is something that is being required by these various alliances and um, bilateral commands that we're part of like NORAD and NATO. Um, it's not a choice. We have to become interoperable with them. It's a, it's one of our um, key operating principles. Uh, other context and contextual things here too. The, I'm sure if you watch the news, um, in the news a lot, the Canadian Air Force is, ex is experiencing um, what I'd say is near crisis level staffing issues, potentially. Um, but, you know, potentially we're not as short as it looks. Potentially we need to look at digitalization as an opportunity to decide what jobs people should be doing and try to shed some of the more uh, traditional um, analog processes that we're doing. So all this to say the CAF really is an industrial aid organization. And we are trying to advance probably more than one step in the future. Um, to modernize for the, the, the current contextual uh, situation in the world. And um, yeah, so that's the problem. And uh, go ahead, next slide. They'll start talking about the solution. So very lucky, like I mentioned, to have the uh, uh, document that was released last year. It's a publicly releasable document. So, um, you know, uh, it is Google it. You can find it. It is a very nice document. It, it reads really well. It looks really nice. But unlike a lot of other documents, that we have produced in the past, I would say this is very actionable. It's not meant to be a thing of itself. It provides a basic steps and outline of how we're going to get at this. I, I do mention in this slide here that one of the key pieces we have um, subsequent to this, what is a, a cabinet approved initiative to essentially prime the pump for getting at the fact that, as I mentioned, we're a bit of an industrial age. Uh, potentially, I've joked before about uh, my job as digital transformation lead for the CAF is to bring the CAF into the 20th century, maybe even the 21st century. But um, honestly, that's a bit of a joke. But next few slides, I'm going to talk about the DCP, the Digital Campaign Plan. Sorry, there's an acronym, but now you'll all go, go along with me and, and we'll shorten it to DCP. And um, yeah, so I want to show how this feeds into digital literacy, because this is part and parcel for our transformation. Um, next slide, please. OK, so. This is the first large statement in the digital campaign plan. Um, you don't need to read it all. It's bolded in the really you know, bigger pieces there. Um, and, you know, kind of formed from the problem statement. This is the solution you can see is the vision is that the CAF after 2030 is going to be relevant in this new, what we're seeing is the, the next transformational period. 
of military operations globally. So we really want to get at data, AI, machine learning to improve decision-making processes. Um, potentially, this is something that may in the future include uh, autonomous operations, things like that, but really it's well before that. It's it's looking at the ability to um, use the, the vast amounts of data we already produce at, to help inform human decision-makers um, and improve our operations and our success, which is you know a Canadian um, and international, Western and national alliance success. Um, next slide, please. Um, so bear with me now as I'm going to put you through the paces of a military style um, operational campaign plan. Um, things that we'll see in those are very clear mission statements. So this is the mission statement that the Chief of Defense Staff has provided to the entire Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, use a strong language like will. So the Canadian Armed Forces will digitally transform by 2030 are the orders that we have received. So um, nobody's pushing back on this. This is a, a very commonly shared mission statement. Um, and everybody's working towards this. Uh, next slide, please. My favorite slide of the entire presentation because now you can see behind the curtain a bit of military um, thinking. This is the operational design for the digital campaign plan. What's key to, for these types of um, conceptual um, images that show what the plan is, it's one slide. Uh, if you start from the right, that's the best way to look at it, is we start by thinking about what are the actual strategic outcomes we want, in this case, digital transformation. So what do we look like in 2030? Working to the left, the plan is made, uh, all of the very important tasks, activities, uh, and steps along the road. Um, for this plan, we've actually organized it um, a little bit more in depth than, than others in that there's uh, vertically shows three uh, phases along the digital maturity model. So we are currently in the far left, we're digitally aware, hoping to become digitally enabled in the next, um, I would say, two to three years, and, and uh, with the, the mission to be digitally transformed by 2030. So uh, many pieces are moving in here. And then the reason that I started off talking about the uh, digital campaign plan is because nested within this is some pretty key pieces, uh, and digital literacy is one of the most important ones. So the lines of effort, which are named here, uh, manage digital transformation, and subsequent down to that, the fourth one is recruit and train a digital force. Um, that is the piece that that really is where the digital literacy lies, um, but it's not listed in this order uh, to, as priority. They're they're equally important, and one might even say that the digital literacy is maybe the foundation to all the other ones even working. So it's one of the first things we're trying to get at in my directorate is digital literacy. Um, next slide, please. So this is the the broken out objective. Um, within that line of effort that is directly linked to digital literacy. So as you can see here, digital literacy is all of the knowledge and skills and everything culture-wise that we need to shape the CAF of the future. And the end state is a CAF that has the technical digital skills to do operations in a digital environment. Um, I've broken it a little, bit, a little bit better in a couple other slides here, but this is generally speaking the work that we're doing in the next three years to the next bound and then to 2030. To make sure that we have the skills. Next slide, please. Also pulled from the, the digital campaign plan um, is uh, this description here of our digital maturity model. Um, and I've highlighted here in red the pieces that directly speak to, to digital, digital literacy. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, in my estimation, the CAP is, is currently digitally aware and we have levels of digital literacy, but they're low. And along the along the uh, spectrum here to the right, um, ho hoping to get down to uh, digitally transformed by 2030. And here, actually, uh, very key, it's showing the, the last phase, the final phase of transformation, because uh, I think transformation should be looked at less as a journey and more as an evolution. After we're digitally transformed, there's a state that's required to continually advance as the uh, digital space is going to continue to keep moving forward. So what does low levels of digital literacy mean in our context here? Um, there are places that are doing more digital work, and they have found uh, unique creative ways to upskill their people or bring on contractors and have the digital literacy levels within their organization rise as needed. What's lacking is an institutional level and future looking uh, program to make sure that this is something that becomes sustainable long term. So um, yeah, next slide, please. So rather than a simple like one sentence digital literacy uh, definition, which 
um, does exist, uh, I find it much more useful to go, and this is directly taken from DCP, um, anything important in my estimation can't be defined in, in one kind of cute sentence. It's, uh, you have to look at it in a bigger context. So we're looking at digital literacy, both from an individual level, um, so each member of an organization, as well as the organization as a, as a whole. Um, I'll get more into that kind of as we go forward here. But, you know, um, the, the key pieces here, um, highlighted in red, is looking at, you know, the individual skills, how they understand, um, you know, their place within the digital uh, workplace, um, especially as it pertains to ethics, responsibilities, and uh, and and their, their rights, um, especially in the context of government. And the last piece is the skills and knowledge and attitudes that are required for their piece of military operations. So, um, you know, it's important to talk about here. This is uh, even just the word literate. I, I've had this discussion with a few people um, who are new into this. Uh, hopefully no one uh, uh, jumps in the, in the chat here and tells me I'm way off. But uh, the way we look at it is that literacy is, is the same as same kind of analogy as, as between reading. Um, so it's not enough just to be able to read, read digital. It's important that um, people read read to a higher level, a, a same description as difference in reading a you know a book for a preschooler or an academic article. You can read the words but not understand them. So it's comprehension beyond just the basics. And as I mentioned, you know, we can look at it both individually and organizationally. Um, that's something that we're planning on doing. Uh, next slide, please. So what are our plans to uh, address our uh, digital literacy needs as we go along the maturity model? So we are first defining what a digital literate CAF member uh, and digital, digitally literate CAF looks like, um, much like the digital campaign plan. We start by looking at the far right and think about what would a digital literate, literate person look like in 2030 in order for us to do the important operations that we do um, and how the you know the aggregate of that looks like for the calf to be able to be digitally competent in the future. So once we are able to do that, which is I've called here step one, is defining what the digital literacy looks like, um, then we'll be able to actually make a plan of how we're going to address that. So in within that, and I'll go into a little bit of details here, is we're developing uh, digital personas, um, and each of those personas has a different you know grouping and and um, competencies within different digital competencies. So it is a way of looking at um, the different types of people within the CAF and how much digital literacy based on their role or their position that they might need. That they might need. Um, we are we've been doing this for a little while, and we're currently refining it as well with some input from we have a defense advisory board study team um, that's looking at the issue with, for us as well, and um, as well of course we're, we're coordinating with various stakeholders across the CAF community. Um, so. We're in step one, but we're still working on step two and three as well. Um, so we're not, uh, it's not necessarily linear. So as we're looking at step two, it's just the um, kind of short term looking at the difference between what the gap between where we are and what we need to be short term. And we're going to try to address those. And that's where my directorate is going to try to address those. It's more our uh, area of responsibility. So we're looking at a number of different um, strategies for this. One of them is um, we have under that aforementioned um, strengthening the digital backbone initiative. We have some money we're going to use to procure some licenses from various online learning platforms. Um, many of those are going to be able to curate some learning paths based on our digital personas so that uh, organizations can um, use these licenses that we're going to essentially manage and upskill their, their workforce. So the reason that this is important is that uh, it's not enough to have the, the 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 license and the you know the rest of that stuff. You need to have the we always say the chance to have. You need to have your supervisors um, supportive of the fact that you might be spending a couple hours a week or whatever the requirements are to do this training. But that's very important for us. Another thing that's important when we're going on the procuring licenses side is that it can be done anywhere in the world on any device and therefore is democratizing access to these types of programs and not just those that are uh, in the right circumstances uh, with the right access in Canada. Um, we're also looking at internally developed learning paths. So for a few key areas, we're developing our own in-house training or you know, using some um, contracted support to do so, but we're gonna deliver that training because we see it as a key enabler early on. Um, so it's a little more active than some of the other areas. 
And then finally, the, the final and most important step, but it takes a bit of effort to get to here, is that we the integration of all of the digital literacy competencies into our Canadian Armed Forces professional development system. So we have a system that takes every single member of CAF from when they join and as they go along their career, depending on their, their, uh, their trade, their rank, a number of other factors, and it provides them along their journey all the training they need to do their jobs. Um, it sounds like a very simple thing, so each of these steps are very simple, but the level of, of uh, thought put into this whole professional development system is to ensure that there's no gaps. Um, people receive the training. So digital competencies does not exist within that right now. So we're working with the responsible entity within the CAF to make sure that there's a plan for this to be um, in the future, a new person that comes in, let's say in one year, that by the time that person's a general, they would have saw along their, their entire career, the right training at the right time to do with digital competencies. Um, and um, that is, I'm going to go into a bit of depth, especially on um, step one here, because that's where we're at right now, and that's kind of what we're spun up to. Um, I'm just going to stop here really quick, because and, and, I can see that there's chat or Q&A, and I um, just want to see if it makes sense here. Uh, we usually look at the questions at the end of the pr presentation. Okay. So that's what I will do so. Oh, thanks. All yeah, right, no back problem. To yeah. Um, so, yes, next slide, please. Very perfect. So, Okay, so the digital personas, as I mentioned, is is what we're calling them, but um, just trying to set up an idea of the different types of digital people within the CAF. So we've been working on this since before I started in this position, my predecessor was working on it. Um, and what I'm going to brief here in the next few slides is, is the current uh, contract for digital personas and competencies that we're using. I just wanted to mention that it is a synthesis of, of a number of different places, so it's not uh, starting from fresh or or just my sensibilities. Um, we're, I'm using, so uh, I should have updated this slide here a little bit. There, there is no ADM DIA anymore in the Canine Armed Forces. Um, there is a new director or new uh, level one organization set up that's about uh, digital transformation. Um, but they have a data governance framework, and we use a little bit of the same idea as they have for data personas, as well as some of the um, uh, ideas from foreign militaries that have been doing the same thing, but maybe a few years ahead of us. Um, and some other people that have been doing some thought in here. Um, next slide, please. So as I said, the personas are essentially uh, an archetype of different possible digital citizens within the CAF. Um, right now we have, uh, and bad math here, because I, I should update that as well, eight personas now. But the important part is we have four common personas. Um, so this is not based on where you're working. It's more based on the time you've been in, um, the rank level you're at, and where you are along your career. And it's it's would be kind of shared mostly among all, for instance, I'm a Lieutenant Colonel um, in the Air Force, but a Lieutenant Colonel in the Army should have had the same type of training just to be a Lieutenant Colonel in the CAF. But we have four and growing role-based personas. So I'll go into those more, but those are more about what job people are doing and what the requirements are for each job. Um, next slide, please. So, as I mentioned, there, there's something in the CAF that we call the developmental periods, but it's the, um, you know, based on ranks. So what we have done here is, you know, names do matter and words do matter, especially in the CAF. So the personas themselves, we we did choose some names that were a little less corporate sounding, even if we basically were using some models that had some corporate words in it. Um, and so for us, operations are the most important thing. So a digital operator is the common brand new Canadian Armed Forces member. Um, now, based on the companies, a, a very large portion of these people joining are going to be already digitally literate enough to be a junior member in the CAF. Um, that being said, there are people that join the CAF from numerous different situations across Canada and internationally. Um, and we always make sure that there's the base level is shared among everyone. So we make no assumptions. We'll make sure everyone gets the basic, um, the basic information that they need to be a digital operator within the CAF. Um, a digital supporter and leader and senior leader is as we go along there. And again, that's just um, everybody has a role to play within a digitally transformed CAF. It's not purely an IT role, although we do have IT people. Everybody has a basic amount of, uh, and generally speaking, um, along their, their career becomes more and more um, uh, deep and broad, depending on where they're going to be. Um, so, yeah, uh, next slide, please. 
So as I said, this is the growing part and we foresee uh, because this is just to look at um, trying to look at learning paths and other ways to upskill based on role. So um, as it grows out here that I mentioned digital enabler, it's the uh, the one at the very bottom, um, digital commander is another, uh, another one that's similar to. So right now we're looking at just the key people that are in the key digital transformation um, spheres right now and trying to give them in a short amount of training because right now that's you know, anyone, there's not lots, lots of extra white space for people to do a whole bunch of training. So it's, you know, a minimum of training to have a high impact to unstick current digital transformation processes, uh, current digital solutions that are working their way through or finding some key roadblocks. And sometimes roadblocks means people finding the, the key roadblocks to help inform them of what their role is so they get more comfortable with it. And so they understand um, how to move the digital transformation along. So the um, we're looking at these uh, personas as probably a, a lot of the curated learning paths are gonna, gonna provide these um, uh, specialties here. And um, in the next slide here, I'm gonna start talking about some of the competencies that we have come up with here um, that we would be seeking to have courses deliver some of the training in here. Um, next slide, please. So uh, this is the latest version, and it has some inputs from the Defense Advisory Board um, study team that looked into our uh, personas. So what we've done is we have all oh, the numbers now, I think, are 28, but we have a growing number of competencies. Um, the companies are also grouped according to a common theme. So um, if you see the bottom one, digital enablement, um, it's something that a brand new member wouldn't need any competency in, but a senior leader would very much need, need to be able to um, define and communicate a digital vision. So um, it'd be impossible to do so without a, you know, a pretty advanced uh, level of digital literacy, common digital literacy, to be able to have the, their organization, which has been directed to digitally transform, to provide a vision for that at each individual level. So these, these uh, uh, different competencies um, are going to be able to provide to the vendors an idea of what matters to us, what level we would like it to be talked to, and that way we can hopefully put some people through some of this training and uh, and make up some of the gap between the literacy um, that we have and what we need. Uh, next slide, please. And as I mentioned in the beginning, too, you know, it's not purely about each individual member. There's an organizational digital literacy model that we have to apply as well. Um, so it's a little bit harder to do this. Uh, here I've listed based on our own digital campaign plan, how we're looking at it along the digital maturity. So aware, enabled, transformed, a nice, you know, uh, a word picture about what that means to us. And below that, we have our working model here of trying to figure out based on, on four different categories where we are. So it's a bit of a, uh, a matrix here, but it's not purely about quantity. It's not purely about quality. It's not purely about our, our, P, our professional development system having these things in there. And it's not purely about culture. It's, it's all of them all at the same time. So we cannot be consider ourselves to be uh, at the level of transformed and digitally literate at that level if we don't have enough people with enough quality. So um, this is why we're looking at it as it's no single thing. So while we could say that it's a great goal to have, to have you know every member meets the basic um, you know digital literacy requirements, um, if that's only for the basic if all the senior leaders only have a basic understanding, that's great, but it, the quality matters too. Um, this has been um, one of the areas that the Defense Advisory Board study team uh, have only, you know, they started to give me some information on this because it was the, um, start getting at the individual levels has been the the kind of the bigger, the bigger fight at the beginning. Um, but this is certainly important to be able to report and track and figure out how we actually doing so we can adjust in flight. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide, albeit short, is probably, I could do uh, 20 minutes on it if we want to. Um, so of the challenges, I, I kept it to the three kind of main areas um, that we're having challenges towards uh, digital literacy, upskilling, and digital transformation in general. So capacity is is huge. So we are short people in the, in the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, I think I saw in the news the number says 15,000 or something like that. So we are short people. And not just that, we are, uh, I wouldn't say we're short talent because we're not short talent, but we don't necessarily have the right talent in the right position. So 
we have a bit of a, of a traditional um, model for for moving our people around, and it doesn't always doesn't always mean that you pick the right person for the job. Um, we don't apply for positions like saying the public service applies for positions. We moved around based on the needs of the service, and it doesn't always match up. So either we need to find out where the talent is and push it to the positions where it's best suited, or find the positions that need upskilling and deliver that training just in time. So there's, there's more than one way to do it, but um, capacity is a, is, is a big issue. Um, we can use contractors in the short term, and we are doing that uh, in, in, in many places. However, we have found that if you don't have uniform CAP members involved in, in digital projects, the projects are, are certainly doomed to fail because we need to have that level of expertise of the actual business process, in this case, operations or an administrative process. But if we don't have that hand in there, it doesn't really work. And it requires a level of digital literacy that maybe isn't, definitely isn't trained within a career at this point. Um, so we're getting it somewhere else. Um, and off, another issue is often capacity um, might be actually the key issue in the, the pace at which we're trying to transform. Sometimes, often, no is a better answer when you talk about resources. So if, an, if a no means I don't use re time or people or money resources, then it's really easy to say no. So one of the things we're looking at and, and we're looking at all the processes that we can help at is trying to find the spots where we can demonstrate that a yes is easier. Um, there could be some carrot, some stick, but we have to make it so that a yes is, is a valid option. None of this is malicious. And then certainly if there's anybody within, um, you know, d and Cath listening in here, I'm not um, saying that the people don't want to. Everyone wants to. There's no, there's nobody that's against modernization or, or digitalization, but there's some imperatives, some reality that they're, they're short people. Um, depending on the place you're at, you're, you're two of eight, you know, uh, for a, a, you know, a subdirectorate. And, you know, you don't, it's not malicious, it's survival and it's to keep your head above water. Um, so the second piece for sure is a problem is, um, you know, process issues. And I, here I wrote, you know, traditional and bureaucratic. So a lot of how we look at a lot of things are traditional and bureaucratic, um, looking at procurement as uh, capital expenditures, vice operational expenditures. So, you know, it's probably not heretical if I said the government does not innovate well, because uh, we're set up to be bureaucratic and to, to uh, protect ourselves against ourselves in a sense. So the CAF is not an exception to this rule. Um, that that being said, there's there exists an incredible amount of innovation um, and motivation within the CAF, especially for digital transformation. There are, are so many bright people at the, especially at the levels of the the working level of the CAF, who see who know the know the processes, see the problems, and even can propose solutions. But what they lack is um, the resources to do anything about it. And the fact that there's another mission coming the very next day, so it's another capacity issue. Um, so it's also, you know, realistic. We have to stay realistic and understand that we live in a bureaucratic institution, and you know, legally and uh, uh, procedurally, we have to follow the the policies and procedures. So what we can do, hopefully, um, going forward, is identifying any of the issues that are that are creating the biggest roadblocks, and we can work, you know, diligently at removing them uh, by working with the key stakeholders. And again, like I, I said, if we can figure out how making yes, uh, a yes is easier than a no, that will go a long way. But often with um, with transparency, we can get people to to uh, acknowledge that they don't they're not opposed to something, but they have some some resource constraint. And often we're able to map them with the resource or at least attempt to. Um, but the biggest issue with digital literacy and digital transformation uh, growth within the CAF is institutional. So it's the CAF itself, and it's not. Some of these things we can't fix. So the CAF is a little bit different in many ways from many different government organizations. But one of them is that the CAF does not hire middle managers or senior leaders. We make them, and it takes years. So it's good. It's good news and bad news. It means that when you bring somebody in brand new now, one day they will be the chief of defense staff. And if they already get all this stuff and they're just going to kind of get smarter along their career, great. But we can't just hire a, a, a new senior leader, a new general officer because uh, for digital transformation from you know, Microsoft. Um, so we, we have, that's the problem that we have. It's just the, um, something to be dealt with, but this is what we're looking at as some of these curated learning paths directly for some of the middle leaders. Um, the training that we have is, and, and the resource we have are directed towards the closest alligators in the boat, the core tasks that we have to do. And, and often digital transformation is viewed by operators. And I say operators, it's the people like doing the very military standard tasks as an IT problem, as somebody else's problem. That's where the IT people do it, but really that they're the core people to make this happen. They need to lead it. Um, 
So again, that's one of the reasons that we're using that digital commander, digital enabler learning path to operationalize their role within digital transformation. And um, in the end, uh, you know, the D&D, &D, you know, it's probably good to, to, to tell D&D CAF, this is some of the messages we're going to push forward on some of this training, is that, you know, we are an industrial age organization, and it, industrial age organization sees bold moves as risky, but you, the opposite can be seen as being true in the digital world. So in the digital age, it's got to show people that inaction is actually the most risky. And if you can tr turn that around and explain to people that, that, doing nothing is at higher risk than doing something, then this tr transformation will happen within the CAF and digital literacy will have been, you know, uh, addressed for that. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think I have one more slide um, that doesn't need a lot of, of uh, briefing here if I want to leave it for some Q&A, but, um, you know, we're still working on this here. We're hoping to add some capacity this, this summer, um, adding some more people to the newly formed, it's now one year old, the Chief of Combat Systems Integration. Um, to do this a little more full time as one single file, but um, yeah, this is a pretty big, a pretty big uh, um, initiative and a focus area for the CAF uh, for about the next seven years, hopefully, if we're successful. Just trying to find the mute. Uh, well, that was a great presentation. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you sharing that story with us. Um, we got a couple of questions, if you're okay with that. Absolutely. Um, so the first one, I think you can probably read, it's a significant work on digital transformation, literacy, data stewardship, digital culture, and talent are underway throughout the government of Canada, uh, often led by the TBS, uh, that's Treasury Board Secretariat, and a school for public servants, uh, the privacy uh, uh, PCO, uh, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, <statistics>. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a, so there's a government-wide sort of initiatives, and they're just yeah. wondering uh, if D&D has, has a role or is, is a, uh, involved in those. Yeah, no, that's that's a great question, and we're we're 100% aware of this fact. Uh, I alluded to it really quickly, but I can go into a little more detail that, you know, D&D CAF absolutely uh, understands our, our place within the government uh, in terms of digital and data, you know, transformation. Um, and the, the government last December officially stood up a new ADM that is um, di digital transformation. So they actually took the, the not that old, but the uh, ADM for um, data innovation and analytics, um, and they, they, they pushed into that another role as well as digital transformation. So they will be leading the efforts that are the, the um, you know, uh, interministerial kind of uh, efforts across government. So they'll be keeping us inside a box. And what, the, what we're doing in CCSI is trying as best we can to stay operationally focused so towards military operations which is the delineation between like the CAF and D&D &D. and so being very CAF focused um, and the only things that we're doing outside of that box that we're putting ourselves is as we wait for the capacity to come uh, to fully build within ADM DT so it's so important to us to be digitally transformed by 2030 for, for some very important operational reasons um, that I'm not going to um, go into great depth uh, right now especially because uh, my colleague, uh, Brigadier General Dave Anderson, uh, retired, is going to be briefing on Friday afternoon on the campaign plan and the digital transformation in the CAF and his um, work towards that from uh, the last, I want to say, seven years. Um, but 100%, we're moving along with government. It's a bit of a different thing, though, in d and CAF, or sorry, in the CAF. Um, we have clients. We we definitely do. They're not the same clients as the rest of the government. Um, our clients, depending on how you look at it, um, are our adversaries, maybe our allies and and our, you know, and then probably third our members, but our our clients aren't aren't the uh, you know uh, Canadian citizens. Um, so when we think about our problem set, it's it's looking at it that way. So while we do 100 percent follow all of the government the government guidance on transformation, the rest they're doing, um, at times there are caveats for national defense as well in some of them, but um we're focused a little bit differently uh, in that respect, but DT, the ADM DT uh, will be that overall uh, cohesive uh, with government uh, organization, and that we're nesting underneath them. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, as they become, I want to say, next probably 18, 24 months, very um, capacity rich, then they'll they'll end up taking a lot more off of our shoulders because they'll have a bigger capacity than we have. 
So, well, certainly it, uh, it seems like you've given a lot of thought to this and uh, you put together a really good uh, sort of uh, plan and roadmap towards uh, digital literacy. Uh, I think that uh, there'd probably be a lot of departments that could probably leverage and, and uh, uh, hopefully there's some, there's a lot of them here to, to sort of learn from, uh, from what we, what, the journey that you're on mm -hmm. so far. I have another uh, question here from, uh, from Brittany C. What's the greatest misconception about digital literacy? What aspect uh, is the hardest to explain when trying to get those yes answers to be able to move forward? And we've got about uh, five minutes or less. Okay. Well, um, the the first question, Grace, Mr. Literacy, um, I think that because of some of the discussions I've had with um, people that have opinions on the topic, is the misconception about the digital literacy is that they use the the term like literate. Like I don't even know if I like the term literacy because they look at it as as soon as you can read, you're done. So um, that that's one of the misconceptions is that there's amount you can give and then move on. When in the in the end. It changes so much that even the basic amount is going to keep changing, but also it depends on what you're doing, what your literacy requirements are. So it's a spectrum. Um, and the second, the second question, I think, um, I like the second question a lot because it's something we we think about a lot. Um, but the aspect that's hard to explain is their their return on investment in a capacity constrained environment. It's just a good. It might just sound like a good idea, and we we I don't know if it's a government, I don't know if it's a calf thing, but we we we. Have, People usually say it's the good idea fairy, but it might be something that's not just the calf. I don't know, but but there's always someone that says they or we, but they don't mean me, right? So, oh, they should uh, they should digitalize that thing. That'd be great, like, but that that's not us. It's a good idea, but it requires an investment. So, but to show the return on investment, so if you can do that, I was having this discussion with um, uh, someone that joined the team in, in the summer, and I mentioned that the best thing that you could do coming here is to have a good elevator pitch that has numbers that says. If if I had that three million dollars and I doubled the output, it would save fifteen and this many F, the full time equivalents, and you'll get the money before the elevator is done because it's pretty easy if you can do it with some hard data. So that would be the the thing. And then the the last thing I'll say because I'm probably coming up in the minutes then is the the previous thing you were mentioning about um, you know having we have a, a pretty good plan for moving forward and hopefully some people can get some of the um, stuff from this and apply to their organizations. I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, uh, concur with that and say that if I have any advice, because I can give this because it wasn't me who did it, make a good plan, like the digital campaign plan, uh, campaign plan that we have. So make a good strategic plan, but one that is good because it's actionable after. So it goes beyond um, aspirational and just saying in the future we will be digital literate. But it actually is set up in a way that you could you could go backwards and say so what, who should do what, and go backwards, and it becomes an actionable plan. Uh, maybe a very complex one, but actionable. That would be what I say. And that's my shout out to those that came before me and wrote the digital campaign plan in a way that for us comes right down to very small tasks. And if anybody uh, um, does want to reach out after and, and have a chat um, to myself or anyone on my team, that's great. Uh, I'm sure my contact information is somewhere around here, but um, if I don't know, if I don't have the background, I'm sure I won't have many subjects, but I definitely know a lot of the folks I do. And that it's, it's also important to, for that long term to make sure that when people start to deploy again, that the, the work continues, uh, you know, with the same level of uh, intent. Um, okay. Oh, so there we go. Um, all right. Well, I just want to thank you again, uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Clement, uh, for, for this uh, great presentation that you gave us today. And uh, I guess that's it for every, everybody else. You'll have to disconnect this to, to go to the next sessions. Uh, in this stream, we have got Dr. Danica Marson uh, talking about principal quantum scientist, who's talking about the women in STEM, a Q&A session. Uh, and then we also have in uh, streams one and three, uh, there's a talk about Rwanda, a digital transformation benchmark. And then as well in stream three, this digital transformation is not about transformation. It's about getting results. Sounds, sounds like a good, uh, a good presentations that are coming forward. All right, well, thanks everyone, and uh, I'll leave it there and uh, we'll stop the recording. <laughs>